In the last video, we added the functionality for actually making our fire tower um, shoot at the monsters, but right now the projectile just spawns on the tower. Um, so in this video, we will make sure that the projectile follows uh, the enemies, and we will also make sure that we can shoot projectiles from all our towers. So right now, if you would place another tower here and click next wave, it will give you a null reference because the tower doesn't have a projectile, right? So we have to create some prefabs for all our projectiles. So we can basically take our fire projectile, pull it in here, and then we can select this. And we can write ice, for example. And then we can select the ice sprite. And or you can go to your sprites and select your um, towers and then tiles and then select ice and drag it onto this anyway you need to rename this uh, frost projectile and then drag it into the prefabs projectiles folder and then we can name it to poison projectile and then we can go to towers uh, projectiles and select the poison and pull it up here and drag it into the prefab folder under projectiles and then we need to rename it to what was the last one the storm projectile and then again select it and storm maybe and can't really find it so what did I call it let's go to um, towers and projectiles and just call lightning right just take this one and drag it onto here and then take the storm projectile again and drag it into the projectiles prefab folder when you've done that you can actually go to your um, prefabs and towers and then select your frost tower select the range when you have selected the frost tower you can write the name of the projectile so this is frost projectile And you can select the poison and write poison projectile and select the storm range and write um, storm projectile and so storm projectile and as you can see on our fire range we have an attack cooldown of three seconds so let's just write three seconds here and here and here so now we have them but there is something missing we need to go to our game manager and object pool and here we need to write uh, five six seven eight and then we have to put our projectiles there so we have our fire projectile we also need our frost our poison and our storm now we have added the projectiles here so there shouldn't be any problems now by placing a storm tower clicking here now it should just spawn that lightning and it does and it should also do the same with the frost tower and so should it also do with the poison now there's a frost projectile there and we should also do the same with the poison here and there we go so now we can spawn a projectile on each tower so that's not a lot of fun when it doesn't follow the monster. So in this video, we are going to focus on focus on making the projectile follow each monster, right? So what I did was that I actually added something called projectile speed to uh, my actual tower. So let's go to our uh, scripts and then find the tower sprite uh, tower um, script and then we need to add some projectile speed here for now we would like to be able to set the projectile speed from uh, the inspector so make a private float called projectile speed and let's just serialize that field so that we can reach it from the inspector right which means that we can go to our 
um, tower prefabs. Select the range, and there should be a projectile speed here, right? So what should we put that speed at? Well, let's see what I've written here in my notes. Um, just need to find the right place, because I think the speed that I put there should be kind of okay. Um, let's see. We can always adjust it. So the speed I put was uh, free. Okay. So let's just put it at free again. And you can do that for all the ranges. Just select all ranges under the towers and set the projectile speed as free here. So you can adjust it. You can make it faster. You can make it slower. Uh, do whatever you want to do. Okay. So now that we have set a speed, we can use that speed, right? So if we open up our projectile script, and if you don't have a projectile script, uh, I suggest that you create it already. Um, because now we need to use this projectile script for something. We need to add a, a function to the script. Um, so we can call it public. Oh, actually, let's make private, private void photo target. Or move to target, actually. So move to target is going to make the projectile follow along with the target, right? Um, so we can call it an update. And in here we need to say, well, first of all, we need a target, right? The projectile needs a target. So we need to make a private. Um, yeah, I guess it should be a monster called target. So this is the target of the projectile, right? And it will get that target from the parent, which is the tower, right? So when the tower shoots, it will tell the projectile which target to hit, basically. So um, we'll have to do a check here. So if our target isn't null, okay? So if we don't have a like a null target, which means we have a target, just to make sure we don't try to hit something that doesn't exist, and our target is active, right? Because there is a chance that our target will be removed from the game at some point, and then it's inactive, and then there's no point to follow along and try to attack the target. So to, we need to move towards the target's position, right? So we can say transform dot position equals vector free dot move towards. Okay. What do we need to move towards? Well, we need to move towards our target dot position. Transform the position here. And I'm getting ahead of myself because this is our own. Let's see here, this is just read what it says. This is our current position, right? So that's like transform the position. And our target position is our target, which is our monster up here. Dot transform that position. And how fast should it move? Well, we need to use the tower's projectile speed, right? Because on our tower, we just created a projectile speed. And we need to use that projectile speed so that we can... The, the reason that I'm doing this, instead of putting this on the actual projectile, is that I would be able to upgrade my towers later. And then maybe we would like to upgrade the projectile speed, right? So one tower might have a 100 projectile speed. That's very high, but it might have a high projectile speed. And if it has that, well, then we need to use that projectile speed and apply it to the projectile every time the tower shoots. If we would put it on the actual projectile, then we wouldn't be able to upgrade uh, one projectile. Let's say we upgraded the storm projectile, then all storm towers would have a faster projectile because it sits on the actual specific projectile. So instead of doing that, we will upgrade it from the tower. I hope that makes sense. So how do we use this? Well, we need to say time dot delta time to make it frame rate independent multiplied by our parent. And how do we get our parent? Well, our parent is a tower, right? So we might as well just make a private tower called um, parent, for example. So this is my parent the projectiles parent the tower that it comes from. So we can take that parent and use it by saying parent dot projectile speed. But as you can see, there's nothing called projectile speed. I can't access projectile speed here. Well, that's because our projectile speed is private. So we need to do something. So I would like a field here because I would I want to be able to set it from um, 
from the properties out here, right? So that's why I need a field. I can't just make it into a, a automatic property. So what I can do is that I can write public float projectile speed with capital P. Remember, this shouldn't be written exactly the same way as this. It should be the same, just with um, Pascal casing with uh, capital P in the beginning. Projectile speed. And then I make a scope. Now I say get return projectile speed. Okay, so this is very important that you return the one with small letters and you write this one with capital. If you write like this, like so, then you will get an infinite loop because this one executes and it returns this and then jumps up here and it will jump between these two lines forever. Okay, so that's why it's very important. So now that we have done this, made a public property, well, then we can go in here and say parent dot projectile speed and then end it. So now our tower will shoot and use the tower, uh, like our tower will shoot and the projectile will use the tower speed. But there's one problem. We have never set this parent to anything. So right now, um, our tower doesn't know or our projectile doesn't know what the tower is and so we can't get any information from it. So we are going to make a public void called initialize and we are going to take in a tower called parent and in here we are simply going to say this dot tower oh sorry this is parent equals parent there we go so that's an initialize function right besides that uh, we will also need a target and we have our target here so we can just say uh, this dot target equals parent dot target okay right now we can't access the target so we go to tower and we see we have a target here which is private so what would make more most sense for us to do well let's just make a public monster called target with capital um, t just as we did before get and then turn mon uh, target There we go. So now we have a property for accessing the target on the tower. So we can say this the target equals parent dot uh, target. So now we have set a target we need to move towards and a parent where we can get our speed from. So initialize has never execute, right? So we need to figure out where to execute initialize and a, a good place to execute that would actually be um, at the place where we are instantiating it, right? So that's our shoot method on our tower. Let's see if we can find shoot here, there. So then we will simply say projectile dot, sorry, projectile dot initialize this. So our projectile will be initialized and it will use, the, and it will um, pass on this which is our tower as a parameter so this is equal to the tower it comes from so this will be equal to this and then we'll take these two values the target and the parent and pass it on to a projectile so that it can use this function here and in update we are executing move to target so it will keep trying to move towards its target so right now we're not doing any damage or anything so the projectile will simply just move along uh, after the tower or after the, not the tower and the, the target so let's just try to run this there's also something extra we need to do let's try to set a storm tower see what happens shoots projectile and it follows the target um, yeah. and as you can see it doesn't turn right yet and it doesn't disappear when it hits the monster but for now you can see it actually moved towards it and now you'll see that I should be uh, get an error here. Go. Okay, so we didn't get an error because I thought it would get an error because we didn't have a target anymore. But apparently it wouldn't get an error. Um, but just to make sure that we don't get an error later, let's see. They say that we want to shoot at a monster that just dies in the minute that we shoot it. Um, 
then we will have to do something. So our projectile here checks is our, if our target is null. So basically, yeah, this line of code right now makes sure that we don't have an error right now. But we also need to handle it because, as you saw, the lightning, the lightning uh, projectiles were just standing right there on the portal, waiting for nothing. Right? They were just idling there. But they need to disappear when the monster disappears. Let's say that a projectile is flying through the level just to hit a monster, and the monster just dies or disappears. Right? Then the projectile also needs to disappear. There's no reason for that pr projectile to exist anymore. So we can make an else if here. And I hit those keys very, very well. Let's see else if if our target does is active. So if our target isn't active anymore because it's been removed, then we say game manager dot instance dot pool dot release object game object. Okay. So we release the projectile from the game, so it gets into the object pool again. So we call release object on the game manager and set it to inactive. So it will be reused in the pool, right? So let's try one more time and see what happens. So we put this here, next wave. Should go down there so it gets hit by a couple of projectiles. Shoot the first one and the next one, don't worry, as I said, we will fix the direction of these projectiles and they will disappear when they hit the monster. So let's see what happens. The monster goes in here and he becomes inactive and the projectiles are still here. And they might be because I forgot to save. Let's try to save again. And let's try to run it one more time because they should disappear. Let's try with the frost tower. Place it here. Next wave. And let's see. Now it should work as intended so that um, the projectiles actually um, disappears. As you can see, these are flying backwards, basically. So now, then, when the purple monster is walking into the portal, and he's gone, then the projectiles will also disappear. And there we go. So the projectiles are also gone. You can see they are here, but they are, yeah, just in the, what is it called, hierarchy here. You can try to say next wave. And these should be enabled again when he starts to shoot because they should be recycled from, as you can see, from the, what's it called, Fr from the object pool, okay? So now we have projectiles that are following our monsters and that's what I want to do in this video. In the next video we will um, make sure that they turn the right direction and that they maybe disappear when they hit the monster or something. Um, I'm not sure if we will do that before we actually do some damage, but uh, we'll, we'll see if we'll do that or if we'll wait with that for doing damage. At least we'll also have to add the animation for our our tower. So thank you very much for watching and remember to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Also don't forget to uh, support me um, if you want to do that because that helps me out a lot and makes it easier for me to keep making tutorials. You can support me in different ways. You can go to the Patreon page where you can support me and if you do that then um, you'll be able to get every single project that I've created here on, on YouTube and you can also support me by getting one of my projects as a standalone product. So thank you very much for watching.